don't get this wrong. Okay, you can't go too far wrong, but I am here to help guide you. Hello, my fellow travelers of Eterra. It's time to talk item factions, the big choice that you will be faced once you get to Majelka in the Divine Era in Chapter 9. Now, this choice is which of two new item factions to join to make your life much easier when it comes to getting the gear you need to push your chosen build class mastery to its maximum. And the way they work is very different and they both have a lot of pros and cons. Now, you can leave at any point from the one that you've chosen and join the other and go back and forth, back and forth, forever. The issue is that getting to the higher ranks, there is up to 10 with each faction, takes a long time. You need to earn a lot of favor, which increases your rank and doubles up as the currency you spend with that faction. You earn it by just kind of playing the game and doing stuff, and then doing faction-specific things too. And if you keep swapping back and forth, you will just limit your progress in either one. Even though you retain your rank when you swap back, it will still be lower than if you've just pushed and powered one. So basically, choose one and commit to it, or at least commit to one pretty quickly so you're not left behind. With that in mind then, let's actually go over each before I give you my recommendation on which I would join, and indeed literally the one I am going to join. First up then, we have the Merchant's Guild. This essentially unlocks for you and everyone else in the Merchant's Guild an auction house, an in-game way to trade items. You've got to think of the Merchant's Guild as, hey, I would rather get better gear, get specific gear, get good gear via other people's loans and then they sell it to me and I can sell mine to other people and vice versa and that's how I'll farm extra pieces that I need and in principle yeah that is quite good you have a merchant in the bazaar for every category of item that you might want and the powerful search tools that outdo even the item filter to find specifically the one you're after on said auction house the favor that you earn with the Merchant's Guild, like with the Circle of Fortune, can be spent on the Faction Vendor, the uh, Faction Gambler, which might well result in some pretty good gear if you get a little bit lucky early on, though it will drop off towards the uh, later, towards endgame. But it's chiefly spent for the Merchant's Guild on putting up an item of yours for sale and then buying someone else's item. Now, when you put a item up for sale, there is no rank requirement. You can be rank 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you can post any item. However, buying them does have a rank requirement, both to actually buy it in the first place, the appropriate rank with the faction is needed, and then to equip it requires you to stay in the Merchant's Guild and be a high enough rank with them to equip it. If you then leave, you can't use it anymore until you go back to the Merchant, so that's worth keeping in mind and that works the same with the Circle of Fortune too. So as you rank up with the Merchant's Guild, you will essentially just gain the ability to buy better and better items as you go along. Starting at rank 1, where you can just trade normal magic and rare items, all the way to rank 10 where you can trade any given legendary item that you want with other players. So that's quite the gradient, and towards endgame, yeah, it does result in essentially anyone getting a perfect drop for you and then selling it, you can then pick it up, and now you're doing really good, you didn't have to go find that item yourself. So it smooths out your luck curve in that sense. The only real issues being that if you are playing a more meta-powerful mastery or build, those items that work for it will be more hotly contested, and might be snapped up before you can even even see them. And then similarly, if you're playing something that's a little bit less popular, well then actually finding good items from other people posted might be a little bit trickier because people might not think to post them as no one may want them. You might actually end up having quite a bit of trouble getting what you need on the merchant side of things. That said, generally, it will really shine during the sort of mid-game.
game. Early on, when there isn't a lot of stuff on there, it's not going to be the best, and super late game, the absolute best tippy-top peak gear is going to be very difficult to find on there, as people will either keep it, or they will be acquiring it via, ironically, the Circle of Fortune, and therefore cannot sell it. So when it comes to the Merchant Guild, you're going to struggle a little bit at the start, and you're going to struggle a little bit at the Ultra End Game, but you're going to find a really nice large pool of general upgrades towards the sort of middle end game. Over then to the Circle of Fortune, where we have an entirely different approach. This one is more self-found. You go out and get the good items that you're after with help from this faction. And that help comes in the form of both the passive benefits of ranking up within the faction, of which they are, well, kind of ridiculous. Ridiculous. And getting more so as you earn more favor and rank up. So, for example, just rank 1. Enemies have a 35% chance of dropping twice as many items, so you just get 35% more items, which is a 35% more chance to get the item that you want, just as a base. That's really freaking good. Then at rank 4, you get affixes are 50% more likely to be exalted. That's also really freaking good. You can have uniques twice as likely to have legendary potential. You can have tier 7 affixes the very best they can be, and they will be on the very best items in the game that take some serious farming to make happen. They are twice as common to appear. That is absolutely massive. There's some that are a bit like fun, like at rank 9 when a set item drops, the entire set drops, which is useful like once or twice, but perhaps not as useful as some of the other tiers, but you really start to get a lot of higher quality gear pouring in just in the background of being part of Circle of Fortune. And that's kind of the point because it's replacing being able to buy other people's lucky drops. You're just trying to increase the ability to get them personally. And like with the Merchant's Guild, any item that you do get via a Circle of Fortune, you are not going to be able to use unless you remain part of the Circle of Fortune at the rank that it requires for you to to use it. But it's not just these passive benefits that you're after. Yes, you've got a vendor and you can get some random items, which again is quite useful early on, but it's all about prophecies. And prophecies are very quite fun. There is telescopes that you can look through and see the prophecies available to you. Selecting and acquiring a prophecy costs favor, and then you just have that prophecy there until you fulfill it. But what exactly is a prophecy? Essentially, kind of look at it as a randomly generated side quest, i.e., Okay, let's go kill this boss in this dungeon on this difficulty, and if you do that, you will get the reward it promises, as a simple example. But more specifically, you can get any category of item you want by looking through the correct telescope, like if you wanted a particular affix shard to apply to your gear, such as a hybrid health. You would then look at the prophecy and go, okay, it wants me to kill arena champion, it wants me to do it in a tier 2 arena, and when I do that, I will get this hybrid health affix shard. Cool, I pay uh, the favor to acquire this, and now that's just there, and it will fulfill when I do that. So you essentially just keep going around all of the prophecies, they again are randomly generated, until you find the one that rewards the thing that you're after, and requires you to do something that you're capable of doing. You pick it up, you go do it, and wonderful! It really is quite fun in that way, because it encourages you to engage with lots of different areas of the game, not just grinding monoliths over and over, for example. You have to go do various things to fulfill the prophecy, which you could look at as a benefit, like I do, but you could also look at it as a negative, it's more legwork than just, you know, opening an auction house, but I quite like it. So let's say you have a prophecy that will reward four exalted chess pieces when you kill a boss in a certain dungeon at a certain tier. When you then go do that, those will spill out of the boss on top of the normal loot, and that's your circle of prophecy rewards. On top of just the extra loot you're getting from the passives of being a high rank with the faction itself. Now, you can refine and control this RNG. Not only can you look in a specific star system to focus on types of rewards, 
you who then have lenses. You unlock three lens slots at level two, level five, and level nine, and in these lenses, you can put various effects. An easy one uh, to uh, point out is a lens that makes it impossible for a prophecy to require arena. So pretend you really just don't want to engage with arena for these to get your items, you put that lens in, and you're just not going to be offered prophecies that involve an arena. But then there's also lenses uh, that can do a lot more than that. There's uh, two uh, categories, regional and greater. Regional are a lot more specific in what they do, and then the greater are a lot more just big increases. So, for example, you can have your prophecies be more expensive with a lens, but uh, you can use them more than once before they expire. Or a quite big deal one, the Refracting Lens of Wealth, which again makes them cost more, but they offer double rewards upon completion, which is quite the big deal. So that's your basic rundown overview of the two item factions. And it comes down to this. Do you want the RNG of finding the perfect gear for your build to be made easier by either A, you're more likely to find it yourself, if so, take Circle of Fortune, or B, you will find it easier to get your gear because you can buy other people's perfect lucky drops that work for you, in which case, take the Merchant's Guild. But if you're looking for the sort of min-max meta -y answer, so far it seems the Circle of Fortune is kind of the better way. It gives a lot of loot, and you really cannot emphasize enough how strong those passives are. Just taking the double chance for tier 7 affixes into account, you are going to end up with the Circle of Fortune giving you more frequent, perfect ultra endgame. You're not replacing this item forever drops, which is going to be much rarer to see in the Merchant's Guild, just on balance of probability and likelihood of it being sold. So early on, as you're starting your journey into uh, your builds, into the end game, you're going to get a lot more loot from Circle of Fortune, which is going to be great. In the mid game, it's going to kind of uh, peter off a little bit, where you're not getting crazy upgrades, you're just kind of moving along, and the Merchant's Guild's probably overtaking you. But then at the very peak end game, yeah, the Circle of Fortune is going to help you more than the Merchants to get that perfect item that is, well, truly perfect for what you need it to be. I would say the Merchant's Guild is also a lot more passive, because you just go to the bazaar and buy your items, whereas the Fortune, you got to play the telescopes, looking at the prophecies, get the prophecies, go do the prophecies, get the drops. It's certainly more active. But bottom line, I think just the passive benefits of the 10 ranks of Circle of Fortune outdo uh, the Merchant's Guild, and that's not taking into account the actual prophecies to encourage more targeted extra loot of exactly the type that you're after, which is very controllable thanks to the RNG limiting lenses. I also think it's just a bit more engaging and fun, and so far that, yeah, is the consensus. All the experienced players, having interacted with the systems, have come to this conclusion, and it's one I've come to too, and that I agree with. I think the Circle of Fortune is going to, in its current state between the item factions, edge ahead. Obviously, it's hard to tell entirely, as we're new in 1.0, we've only been doing this a couple days, and we'll see how it pans out, and how the population of each faction is, but I think certainly early on, as an initial one to choose that's the most reliable, I would recommend the Circle of Fortune. In any case, let me know what you have chosen and why, but for now, like you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our Insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye